Hello fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at the Mini Plot Machine Gatai Series EX Grateful Phoenix from Machine Sentai Kita Major. Now I don't know why this is EX instead of just 6 because the last one we took a look at was 5. So I don't know what makes this EX as opposed to just numbering it next in the line. Maybe there was a little bit more love put into this one. We'll have to wait and see. But as you can see it is comprised of 5 nearly identical boxes just having a different number here on the front. Not too much going on on the top, bottom, or sides. Over here it just shows you the breakdown. So this is box one, box two, three, four, and five. And then on the back here you get to see the robot mode, the two components, and then the jet mode can actually carry the first five machines. So that's pretty cool. We'll take a look at that later on. So pretty much it for the packaging. I'm going to go ahead and get this all built and stickered up, and then we'll take a closer look. So here are the two Machine fully assembled and stickered up. Over here we have Machine Oridin, who is done in all translucent blue. Just has one sticker here on his back, which will eventually become the chest plate in the combined mode. Oh, I'm sorry, he does actually have two gold stickers for his eyes as well. And he's got a tiny little bit of articulation. You have a swivel here in the neck. The uh, head can actually swivel side to side. You have some wing movement. We have kind of a flapping motion we can achieve here like this. Uh, this piece here and you have some swivel action right there and then at the end of the wings and then the tail is actually on a ball joint so that can move all the way around which we'll see in a little bit for the jewel mode when we get there but yeah pretty cool he looks good pretty simple uh, over here we have machine hakobu hopefully i'm saying that correctly uh, and this is obviously the larger of the two i think this is his official like you know, flight mode on his own, and then this is what you turn it over when you want to attach the others. But you can see, I always think this side kind of looks more like an eagle because it kind of has like the beak here, and then the windows here are kind of like the eyes, almost like a visor. And then over here is kind of a more traditional, like almost dragon looking head. You can see there's a stickers there for the eyes as well. Some stickers over here, stickers here for the axes. Uh, I always thought it was weird how the hands just kind of hang out the back, but I guess it's supposed to be like a mini tail. I'm not really quite sure what's going on with that. He does have some wheels. So he can move along when he's carrying all the others, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. Uh, I guess first up we'll take a look at the jewel modes, because these do have jewel modes. So the first thing we're going to do is disconnect this this will actually unpeg from there right here uh, you want to make sure that these are flipped up these little red pieces can flip down but you want to make sure that they are flipped up and then you're actually going to unhook at the thighs like so and then this will flip up actually i'm sorry before we do that we want to split the head down the center and then this will flip around and you can see that there's a little tab slot right there and there's a tab right there. So this will flip around and tab in, flip around and tab in. Then this will come up. Then you can bring the arms down. Now, I kind of wanted to, to bring them down here, but unfortunately that doesn't work. You can only bring them down at the elbows. And that leaves a lot of space, but there's not really much else you can do. And then you just kind of bring the wings around like so make sure that these clear and then there you go that is the jewel mode and like i said it's it's not the best because of the way the arms are handled but unfortunately there's not much else you can do with it um this guy's a lot easier you're going to spin this around 180 and flip this down flip the head down and then you're going to flip these down but first you have to flip up the wings and then close that down like so so this one's pretty simple it doesn't really make a perfect cube or anything like that i mean really neither of them do but there we have our two uh cube or jewel modes and obviously you can see there is a large size discrepancy uh, but let's go ahead we'll transform into the robot mode now well actually let's not do that let's put this guy off to the side Let's show the jet mode off first, and by that I mean having the other uh, five main uh, machines ride the jet mode. So we will open this back up, 
And these are the axe pieces, so you store them in there. If you want to take them off and put them to the side, you can. They don't really get in the way, but they do just kind of slide in there. Uh, this is going to close back up and then click into place. It'll click into place at the thighs, and also you have to re-peg it in up here. There you go, that all clicks into place. And then this will flip back around like so and peg into itself. There we go. And then you can stretch those arms back out at the elbow. So we're right back into this configuration. So this was kind of the other mode. And there wasn't really any articulation in this mode other than to move the wings. I didn't really show that off earlier, but there's there's not really any articulation. <laughs> you can move the wings up and down a little bit if you want. But he didn't really flap wings when he flew. He was more just of a jet. The Phoenix did flap wings, but he really didn't. Um... So once we have it like this, we actually get a couple extra pieces. So these two pieces here are included in it so you can connect the other machine. You can see here that there is a little track, which we're going to use later on for the combined robot mode. And this piece has a little track right there. And that's going to slide on and just stay right about there. This piece is going to connect right here. So that's just going to connect on right there. So next we are going to bring in the original 5 machine from uh, the first set of Kira Majin. Here is Helico. Here is Jet. And here is Shovel. So the first thing you're going to do, take Shovel and he just pegs onto the back of Fire just like that. Just like you were going to pop on the arm, but obviously in a little bit different configuration. We'll set him off to the side for a moment. This, for Jet, we're going to open this up and we're going to flip out the peg that we would normally use uh, when he's transforming into sword mode. And then pop that back. This is going to feed into this little piece that we just pegged in there. So that's just going to drop in there like that and drop on top. And it doesn't really like peg in hardcore. It's really just a kind of a guide to keep it in place. So you don't run into too much uh, issues with it falling all over the place. You can see there's a peg right there and there's a peg hole in the bottom of this. So this just pegs on. And it's a little difficult to peg these in sometimes because you can't really see what you're pegging into. Uh, these two right here are going to peg in right down there. So that just pegs in. Assuming I can line this up. There we go. And then these two pegs that we put on there are going to peg into the bottom of fire. And it's a little difficult to do, and you don't really have to get them 100% like pegged in super tight. It's really just kind of a guide. Just something to kind of keep it in place. So let me see if I can get this lined up here. It's a little bit easier said than done, and it's kind of hard to do in front of the camera. But you're supposed to... Let me, I'm just going to take a minute, and I'm going to get this pegged in here, and then I'll show you how this works. Okay, so there we go. I got those pegged in. And like I said, you don't have to, you know, peg it in all the way or really make sure it's connected. You just have to get it on there enough that it won't fall off when you go to move this around. You probably don't want to super peg it on all the way. Otherwise, it might be a little difficult to get off. But there you go. We have all five of the uh, core machine flying on top. And I think that looks pretty cool. I like this look a lot. I'm really happy that they were able to have the mini plow recreate it. And it's very easy. It's just those two extra little pieces that, you know, you just kind of pop on and then pop off when you are transforming into any of the other various modes. But yeah, I think it works. So next up, I'm going to take all these off and then we're going to try the combined mode with, uh, and I've already forgot this guy's name. It is Hakobu. I don't know. For whatever reason, I can never remember his name. And Oridin. So let's go ahead and transform into Grateful Phoenix. All right, so transforming into Grateful Phoenix, there's really not much for Ordin to do. You're just going to fold these wing pieces up a little bit. That's pretty much it. Um, there is a track piece down here on the tail, and that is just like the piece we used to connect fire earlier. So that's what's going to slide on, and we are going to come back to that in a moment. But for the most part, we're going to put him off to the side, and we're going to be working with uh, Hokobu here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just remove the axes because it's easier just to kind of get them out of the way. And we'll put them off to the side. So we're going to... Uh, this whole section here actually lifts up and just kind of hangs off. Now, to be honest, you could take this completely off if you want. And I think I might. Um, I'll show you why later on. 
but otherwise it's it's just gonna hang here and I'll show that off later but it gets in the way so I'm just gonna take this and put that off to the side as well uh, at this point I'm going to split the legs down the center like so and you can kind of uh, move these out a little bit to the side because you do have articulation here which I'll show off a little bit later and you're going to fold this up and peg this in just like we're forming it into the jewel mode and that kind of gives you your legs now at this point you can fold these down like so and these are pretty tight but they fold down like that at this point I'm going to zoom out a bit if you want to fold the wings back a little bit you can you don't have to it's really just a matter of if they're in your way or not but let me tilt this up we're going to disconnect the arms from each other they do peg in right there and then these are going to rotate down like so and then once you do that you're going to want to take this off because there's actually two peg holes and in the transformation mode you're in the top one but for the robot you want the the lower one just because it makes it sit a little bit more looks a little bit more natural I mean, if you really want, you can leave them in that same position. You don't have to change them, but you can see the difference. So you want to unpeg this and peg that in right there. And then that's pretty much the robot mode. As you can see, you're going to bring Oridin back in, and there's that uh, channel that we talked about earlier. So that just slides right on there. And it's a little difficult because this is on a ball joint, so it's not the best connection, but... There you go. So once that's slid on there, uh, you're going to push this down. And unlike the DX toy, it does not flip those out manually. But you can see the sides of the head are in there. They're a little difficult to get at. If you have a nail or something, you can kind of get in there. Um, honestly, I like to just kind of use my tweezers because it's a little difficult to get these to pop out. But once you do, you can flip them up and they will go on the two sides there. And you have your Grateful Phoenix head. And let's see if I can... The white balance is probably going to freak out. Yeah, that's not going to work out. Um, but I'll try to fix that in a second. But there you can see the head. Just from combining with that. Uh, which I think looks pretty good. Let me get this zoomed out here. Let me fix the lighting. Alright, so here he is fully transformed. Um... He's not going to show up great on camera because he's got a lot of, like, sunken features, which is kind of a bummer. Trying to get a better look at the head, I think it looks cool. But they do give you a new head. I mean, the way all of these sets have kind of come with a more pronounced head on a ball joint. You can go ahead and push these back down. This section will lift up, and then you can actually completely detach this. Then they give you this second section with kind of a newer head. And let's take a look at this now while it's a little bit easier. It, it's not the best. It's okay. I feel like the eyes are a little off. And maybe I applied them incorrectly, but I really put them like where they're meant to go. And I don't know, it just looks a little off. But you can see it's on a ball joint. And how this works, it has a little indentation. You can see right there. And that's so it can clip in. So basically... We're going to peg this in where the head just was a second ago. And sometimes it's a little difficult to do because, unfortunately, a lot of this stuff moves around because of that ball joint in the tail. This moves around a lot, as you can see. But with that little notch, once we get this in there, you can kind of get it to click into place, and then it doesn't move around as much, which is nice. So now we have a little bit bigger head, which is on a ball joint, so you have some nice movement there. And I feel like that just works a little bit. That head's a little bit more in scale with the rest of the robot. I still think the eyes are a little weird, but I think it looks better for the most part. And then you can just kind of decide where you want to put these. If you want them to touch all the way to the shoulders, you can. If you want them to kind of stay straight out, you can. You have a little bit of movement there. So like I said, ball joint there, in the neck. Uh, you have a swivel here. You have a out to the side hinge. You have a bicep swivel. You have, I want to say 180 degrees in the elbow yeah it can bend backwards um you have a wrist swivel now here it gets a little weird because this section is kind of in the way of the hips you can go out to the side no problem and you can do a little bit of front to back but it really once they hit into that it kind of gets in the way you have a thigh swivel 
you do have a knee, as you can see there. You have a knee bend. And then, so this is the part that gets weird to me. So the way the ankles are supposed to work, and let me move this around, they're supposed to be able to tilt. So you kind of have to unpeg this, and then this section is supposed to tilt. You can see that there is ankle tilt built in there. But the way the directions make it look, they make it look like you don't have to bring this piece along. And this just kind of pegs in there the way that, see that tab right there? But then there's not really anything to keep it pegged into this part. I mean, you can kind of peg it in here, but it, well, I guess that would work. I was going to say, it didn't stay, you can see this tab on the side, but it didn't stay that, that tabbed in earlier. But I guess it's staying a little bit better now. So you can do that if you want. Now, I mean, you could leave this pegged in over here to this piece like this. And then you could have that piece kind of hang off to the side. Obviously, I think that looks a little goofy. So you would have to disconnect it from here and then peg it on to this part if you wanted to get ankle tilt. So it is possible, but there's not really a great way to achieve it. There's a little bit of disassembly and reassembly involved. So it's not terrible, but I mean, I guess it works. It gets you what you need, but you kind of have to move this, take this piece off, which is a little easier said than done. And then you have to really connect it over here. There we go. And then really get this to bend. Make sure that's connected. And then kind of, you know. But see, I feel like these pieces are still going to fall off because they just don't stay on that well for me. I don't know why. But there we go. We got we got something going there. We got something. So I like the newer head. I like that bigger head I think really works. The old one was fine, but I think this one's just better. If you want to push these straight away, you can. You can kind of tilt them out a little bit. And then with the angle tilt, which I'm not doing the best job with, but it's a little wonky. And these pieces keep falling off. Let's go ahead and give them the axes. Go ahead and peg those right in. Now you can do the thing where you put one on each side of the fist to give them like a giant staff weapon, or you can give them the two individual axes. I always thought, or oh, I can knock them over. I always thought the two individual axes was just a cooler look. That's just me personally, but you do have options. And then you have this giant piece that I really wish, you know, you could do something better with. I honestly wish you could attach it as a shield. I think that would look really cool if there was some kind of way to attach it to the forearm there. Um, otherwise, it's just supposed to be pegged in here and just left to hang like a weird tail. Which I guess is okay, but... Even if it was just something where, like, I could rotate this around, and this is going to come unpegged there, but if I could rotate this around, see, it's going to do it again, and then flip it up against the back like this, I would be fine with that as well. But, unfortunately, they, they just want you to leave it hang down here. All right. I just think it looks a little weird. I don't remember if he has a tail in uh, the show or not. I'd have to go back and look. It's been a minute. These pieces really, they're just, they're falling off every 10 seconds. So the ankle tilt is there, but it's really not worth it. Just because, I don't know, those pieces are constantly falling off. So he's got nice articulation, and I think he looks good. I definitely like this newer head. But I don't know, he's just, he's kind of my least favorite out of all the ones that I put together. I gotta be honest. Um, well, Gigant Driller wasn't my favorite. Maybe I like him better than Gigant Driller. But I gotta tell you, the uh, all the trains and of course uh, Kira Majin itself, I think are better. I think this guy had a lot of potential, and uh, I don't know their their execution. I don't know, just didn't really do it for me, especially for being an EX. Like I, I, after putting it together, I can understand where the EX is coming into play. He definitely has a lot of plastic pieces. He's got a lot more stickers. There's definitely a lot of love put into him. And maybe it's just a weird design. I mean, I don't know. I go back and forth on it. Like, I really do. This chest piece is just a little too wiggly. I do like the look of it. I think it looks good. I like the head. The wings look good. I will say I think the, the arms are really well done. It's just the legs. The ankle tilts just, it's weird. I'm glad it exists. But it's, it's executed strangely. And this piece on the back, I don't love. Um, I would say from, you know, the torso up, 
he's great from the torso down he's a bit of a mess but it's not terrible it's just i don't know it could have been a little better that's all i'm saying but i still think he's pretty good um i love that you can have the mode where all the other five main machines ride around on him i think that's really cool um I think the cube modes are okay. They're not great. Yeah, I don't know. This guy just underwhelmed me a little bit. He's not terrible by any means. But he's definitely not my favorite of all the ones uh, that I've seen. Like, honestly, I would think... I think the two train ones might be my favorite, honestly. Smog Jokey was great. The, uh, you know, the dinosaur mode was great. The robot mode was great. Um, Zabune, same thing. The shark mode, all the different weapons he could turn into. Uh, his robot mode, all really great. I don't know, this is not this is not a review of Zabun <laughs> or Smog Jokey. But I did reviews of them, go check them out. But yeah, I don't know. This guy, he's somewhere in the middle for me. He's not the worst. He's definitely not the best. He's just kind of meh. And unfortunately, like, he's our last one. So it's kind of a sour note to go out on. Because, I don't know, he just underwhelms me a little bit. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you. Am I just being too critical? You know, is it because I like the the last one so much more and it's just the juxtaposition going right from one to the other? Maybe that is the case. Um, like I said, to, from the, the, the waist up, he looks great. I just think his legs are a bit of a mess with the ankle tilt and those pieces falling off. And that, that thing on that just hangs on his butt, I think it's kind of a bummer. But again, you can remove that, so at least it is removable if you don't want that. So, like I said, he's got some good qualities. He's got some things I don't like. Very middle of the road for me. But again, let me know what you think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching.